All right, what, another back handspring video? <laughs> yes, how I learned it, or how I basically locked it down. Now, if I'm gonna be honest, the, my first back handspring, I don't think I actually did it like this. I think it was just from messing up a backflip. But when, I, when it came to me locking it down and getting over the fear of the back handspring, which in my opinion is a lot different than a backflip because you gotta put your hands down and your fingers down, I actually locked it in and learned it using this method right here. And this method is weird, it's different, Nobody does it because it's complicated and it's it's stupid, you know, but I don't think it's stupid If I show you guys this maybe this will help some people out there who are just kind of looking for a different perspective Looking for a different way to approach this move get over the fear build yourself confidence if none of my other tutorials worked um, You know disclaimer. This is this is weird and kind of complicated and you kind of need to learn another move Beforehand, but it works for me because I already had these down. All right pay attention by the end of this video You'll know my secrets of learning the back handspring. Like a fool, but you gotta focus. So what's all this complicated talk? So the method is slowly using your arms more and more during continuous kip ups and slowly lowering yourself down to the ground to the point where you almost reach upside down vertical and then you can make a decision. Do I wanna kick back up into a kick up or do I wanna continue backwards and go into a back handspring. So you know what, you have the decision, the choice is yours, you can make it, <laughs> you know? Doing it this way gives you options, which gives you confidence, which is like, yo, I can go forward if I want, but I can also go backwards too. <laughs> so in my opinion, this builds you confidence, takes away the fear, all right? So how are we gonna do this? All right, first thing I would recommend doing is, well, learning continuous kip ups. I guess I can try to teach you that right now, but I do have a five minute continuous kip up tutorial <laughs> as I do like every move, right? Let me try to summarize how to learn a kip up and then continuous kip ups as quickly as possible. Oh, it's, I'm gonna get so muddy, whatever, do it for the video, bro. So you wanna um, do a kip up, right? So your arms and palms are gonna be facing like this. So when they go to, back down to the ground, your fingers are facing down towards your leg. You roll back, oh, it's muddy. You roll up onto your shoulders, legs up, and then you kick your legs up like this is you push off of your arms and then you pull yourself up into a squatting position like this. Doing your first kip up is hard for a lot of people, but a little hack that can help you get it quickly is um, opening your squat up wider. So a lot of people want to try and land a kip up like this or like this or like this, but just practice on a deep body weight squat. You can widen the legs like this and then you can land so low in the kip up oh, like that. That's just a little hack to learn your first kip up like this. Keep up. See, I can land so low if I keep my legs wide and put my pelvis right in the center. Then you want to learn the continuous kip up. The easiest way to learn the continuous kip up is you just kind of got to beef it once, okay? So you just kind of have to go for it because the continuous kip up looks like this. See that? Now your first one, maybe put a pillow down, maybe put a mattress down, maybe just put something down or maybe find some soft grass like this, but it might look like this, okay? Sometimes you just need to take the spill. Oh, yeah, sometimes you gotta just do it, okay? The key is, is once you go up into the kip up position, you don't even need to come fully up. You can just kind of relax into it. You just jump right back down the same path and then you land on your upper shoulders first and you bring your legs in. You have your legs out, but then bring them in to absorb that impact and make it more like a jump. Like when I jump, I don't jump in, oh, like that. When you jump, you, you squat down to absorb the impact. You wanna absorb the impact like a spring, like a shock, like a shock absorber. So after you get your first continuous kip up down, right? Maybe just like one. What I want you to work on doing is getting your hands back down to the ground first and then starting to feel yourself come back down and using your arms and then shoulders and then legs like a spring. So really controlling yourself back down with those arms. What does that look like? Watch the control in the arms, ready? Mud city. See how I throw my arms back? Arms coming back. And I'm really, I'm really controlling myself down. Controlling it down, okay? No, I'm, I'm putting a little bit of force using my triceps, using my shoulders, lowering myself down. And for those of you guys who learn how to do this, you will see that all of a sudden you realize you have a lot more body awareness. It's gonna click in your mind. You're gonna be like, whoa, I'm capable. Practice these just a couple of times. And when I started to feel that control, then when I was just feeling it, I would jump back just a little bit more, a little bit more each time, go more vertical, go, go more vertical, and then finally, so vertical to where I'd almost be vertical, right? And then I can make my choice. Do I wanna jump back into a kip up or do I wanna roll over into a back handspring? When you got a choice, oh, 
man. Let me show you guys how I evolved that into the, my first uh, solid back handspring and then really locked it in from there. I mean, really. See, I had a choice. I had a choice and I could choose. Get to forward or backwards, and I chose to go backwards. Now, I know it wasn't that spring, but guys, confidence level just boosted up right there, okay? It's like, what, wait, did I just do a backhand spring? Yes, you did, basically. Good part I noticed about doing it this way is if you really butcher it and you do like land on your head, if you really focus on pushing your arms, being able to control your body down with your arms, even if you really screw up and go to your head, like you can actually make the impact so light and then you can just kind of beef out of it and it's not as, it's not as impactful as just going like, yo, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, all right, come on, let's do this. Doing like a round off and then going for it and just like butchering it, you know, and then just ending up on fail army, you know what I'm saying? It, doing it this way, I mean, you can literally just like slowly lower yourself back down and even if you don't get over, you can just kind of roll out of it. Right, I'll even, I'll beef one on purpose for you guys so you guys can see, even though it's gonna get my head muddy. Oh man. See, oh, see that? Didn't even hurt. Now my head's all muddy though. Great. In a nutshell, that's how I really locked down the back handspring. For me, getting over the backflip fear was more of like the makaku, you know, the wood chip pile. I explained that like many years ago. Back handspring fear, I think I made, tried to make a video on that and um, I tried to use what was logical, you know, what would be logical to do that. When it comes to actually what worked for me and what actually got me over the back handspring fear, that is what did it. Continuous kip ups into a back handspring just because you can really work on that control with the arms. And I know the form isn't perfect, but it doesn't matter because that's how I learned it. And honestly, I'm, I'm happy, okay, I'm happy with it. Heck, if you have a trampoline, by all means, dog, like, heck, use the trampoline to get over the fear of the continuous kip ups. Because the trampoline, you can really just back forth, back forth and work on, you know, absorbing the shock with your legs and then you can put your arms out and just work on it nice and easily with the trampoline. So if you do have that resource, definitely use that. Hope you guys all have a good day. Hope this video helps you all out. Hope this video lets you know that, you know, there honestly is no right way to learn anything. If it works for you, then it's then it's the right way for you, basically put it that way. So if you want to learn something differently, then, you know, go for it. And if you're feeling like it's going to work, then, you know, try it out, experiment for yourself because at the end of the day, you're just going to learn more. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video helps you all out. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for all your positive feedback and all my stuff and putting up with all my weird stuff. And um, more videos, more tutorials, more stuff coming, skits every Sunday, tutorials throughout the week. I got a weird one coming up this Sunday. I'm already planning it out. That's gonna be, it's gonna be weird. I love it. If you guys are looking to get in shape or stay in shape, check out my 12 week calisthenics program, Bodyweight Beast on onlykindsfitness.com. I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on that. You guys are really starting to email me back. Peace, I'll see you all in the next video.